Welcome back to Miss Beasley's Art Studio. Today we'll be learning about alabrijí. Alabrijí are fantastical creatures in Hispanic folklore that are spirit guides in the afterlife. I'll be taking you step by step how to make it. The first step when you are making your alabrijí is to decide on which animal represents you the best, which animal symbolizes you. A symbolism is an icon or image that represents an abstract concept. For instance, the symbol of love will be a heart or dove. The symbol of rebirth or resurrection could be a snake in some mythology, or it could be, or it could be flowers to represent springtime. So, in my case, I am super creative. I love to draw. I love to write stories. That's what I do for fun. The god of the arts in Greek mythology is Apollo. Apollo is the god of prophecy the sun and also artists so for me i'm going to be doing a raven in greek mythology a raven is apollo's sacred animal to start off with i'm going to be drawing a circle for the head notice how i'm drawing super lightly eventually i might make a mistake and i don't want to have it to be too hard to erase so when you're drawing whatever you're drawing make sure you draw super light at first next i'm going to draw a line the guideline for the body let's see i want to go that way this will be the body here what i'm doing here is called a gesture drawing i'm showing the movement of the animal or person that i want to draw when you're drawing any figure or animal that's the first thing you do next i'm going to draw a line where the eyes are going to go and the mouth next we're going to do the beak and draw kind of a triangle. There we go. If you're not sure what animal symbolizes you, choose your favorite animal. Another animal I might choose is a squirrel. I love squirrels. I think they're the cutest thing in the world. I love squirrels, dogs, cats. I love all animals, but squirrels especially make me smile. I could just watch them for hours. So I got the basic outline for my alabrihi are characterized by very bright colors and patterns using line and shape. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding my patterns to turn this into a alabrihi. First up, I'm going to start with the beak. I might do the half point of a flower right here, just the, right there like that. I love flowers. When you're doing this, be thinking of things that you like and how you can represent that. Maybe around here, I'll do a leaf that turns around. We'll be using organic shapes and geometric shapes. Organic shapes are shapes that you see in nature, such as flowers in the leaf. Geometric shapes are shapes that you see in the math book, such as a triangle. So let's go ahead and do the eye. The eye will be an organic shape. But in the middle, I have my circle and to make it interesting, I'm going to give a triangle for the pupil right here.
in the Greek culture, we have this thing called the evil eye. It is believed to keep away evil spirits. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my culture in here. I'm gonna draw the evil eye right here. Usually it has three circles. There's a really tiny blue circle in the middle. I'm gonna leave that for later once I start coloring with the markers. So the shapes I'm using here are called geometric shapes. My head's pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and speed this video up and finish my drawing. Next up, we have the fun part, coloring. We'll be using lots of different things. Here we have Faber-Castell markers. These are two-parted markers, one size purple, one size green. These are very special markers, but we do not color them. These are only used for outlining and making lines. If you have like a very tiny area, like say here, you could probably get away with coloring that in. But like really big area like this, do not color it with that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to color with these really quick. Very gently, do not push hard. So what I'm doing here is the evil eye. I can also go in and use pencils as well. Technically, I am coloring with these, but they're very small areas, so I'm not going to be using for big areas. <laughs>
cool thing about these markers also is that you can draw with them on top of crayons. Usually you can't do that. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna do it on the back, but I don't really wanna do that here. So let's say I have a nice cold blue right here. Most markers, regular markers, the ones that you have in your puppies, let's see if I have one. One second. If I use these regulars, these are called school smart markers, just basic marker, and I go over it it's not going to show up very well. But, if I use these, it shows up very nicely. You can color on top of the crayons. Same with these markers here. You can make designs on top of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by using different markers. I'm gonna go ahead now and speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do it super slow. Alright, here's a work in progress for my Ella Brihi. I started using some nice cool colors. This is a warm color here. I want to show you guys what I mean by writing on top of the crayons. So here we have it all a nice nice guy colored in. The reason I did these two star here, one of my favorite Disney movies is Peter Pan. And Peter Pan flies second star to the right. So this here is Neverland. So that's why I wanted to include that. I'm going to go in and give it a nice Van Gogh style. To do that, I need to add some spiral lines inside the sky. If you look here, it shows up. Use a darker color so you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and show you the finished one later. Next time I see you, we're gonna talk about how to do a galaxy in the background using wet on wet with watercolor.